If you're watching this video, you've probably heard of Singapore math. Maybe from your school's curriculum night or from Sandra Bullock's appearance in the Kelly Clarkson show. It's something called Singapore math. Is that the new math? And I'm like, yeah. what? So what is Singapore math? Is it a workbook, a philosophy? Why does it almost have a cult following? Hi, I'm Wensi and welcome to episode one of my mini series on Singapore math. I'm an expert on Singapore math because, well, I grew up in Singapore. I went through 12 full years of Singapore's math education and lived to tell the tale. And now I'm getting my PhD in math education in the US. So today is your lucky day because I'm bringing it all down for you. The history, the hype, and what is so special about the curriculum. Let's start with Singapore. No, it's not in China. Singapore is a small sunny island in Southeast Asia. It takes 40 minutes to drive straight through the length of Singapore. That's how small it is. Despite its size, Singapore is an amazing place to visit. It has the world's best airport, mind-blowingly good food, and it's super easy to get around because everything is in English. The only downside? The heat. It's 100 degrees with 90% humidity all year round. I don't know how the F1 drivers do it. My advice, bring a pocket fan or two when you visit. It didn't always look like this though. Just 50 years ago, Singapore looked like this instead. Modern Singapore is a very young country. It was founded in 1965. My dad, who's a third generation Singaporean, is a whole decade older than modern Singapore, which is pretty wild to think about. Singapore's math curriculum, as a result, is also a relatively recent development. All the defining features of the curriculum, which we will talk more about in a few minutes, were added in the 1980s. In fact, Singapore's math curriculum as we know it today was only rolled out in the early 90s. So if you do the math, my peers and I are the first generation of Singaporeans to experience the curriculum in its full glory. Now, if you've been paying close enough attention, I've been using the phrase Singapore's math curriculum instead of Singapore math. That's because, and here's the plot twist. Singapore math doesn't exist in Singapore. Math is just math. Simply put, Singapore math is the way that Singapore teaches math. The term Singapore math was created in the US, not in Singapore. In 1995, Singapore was ranked number one in math in the first ever cycle of TIMS, an international education assessment. The world went from- I've never heard of a country called Singapore. To, wait, what are they teaching over there? What's even more impressive is that Singapore has ranked number one in most TIM cycles for almost 30 years. In the 2023 TIM, Singapore is still number one. Naturally, Singapore's consistently high ranking made lots of people very curious and eager to follow in their footsteps. So in 2001, Singapore Math Inc. started importing the math curriculum materials that Singapore was using to the US. They coined the term Singapore Math because they needed to differentiate the curriculum that uses Singapore's approach from all the other math curricula in the US market. Currently, there are four major Singapore math curricula in the US. First, we have the OG primary mathematics series. The US edition of this series is what Singapore students used up till the mid 2000s. The series is actually what I used in elementary school in Singapore, but it's not in use in Singapore right now and it hasn't been for 20 years. Next, we have Dimensions Math, which is the curriculum designed and published by Singapore Math Inc. Then we have Math in Focus, which is also a curriculum adapted from one that was used in Singapore up till recently. Finally, we have Think Mathematics. This curriculum is designed mainly for school adoptions. The most important thing about the Singapore approach is that the goal of the curriculum and of math is to develop problem solving skills. That's why you see so many word problems. In order to achieve this goal, Singapore uses these three methods. 
Anyone saying that Singapore math is not a spiral curriculum is sorely mistaken. Singapore is very explicit about using the spiral approach, which is inspired by an American educational psychologist named Jerome Bruner. This means that topics are introduced at a young age, but they get more challenging every grade level. For example, we introduce addition in first grade, but we don't expect first graders to add within 10,000 straight away. We start by teaching them how to add within 10, within 20, then within 100, so that in a few grade levels, they will be able to add within 10,000. With a spiral curriculum, students slowly and logically build up their understanding of mathematical concepts into a strong knowledge base. They can then access this knowledge base to solve problems. Next up, we have the Concrete Pictorial Abstract Approach, or CPA in short, also inspired by Jerome Bruner. With this approach, children are introduced to abstract ideas with concrete things like blocks and pictures like drawings and models. This not only helps students understand mathematical concepts, it also simplifies and breaks down the problem-solving process for young children. Which brings me to Singapore Math's crown jewel, the bar models. Bar modeling is a huge breakthrough for Singapore because it prolongs the pictorial stage in the CPA approach and bridges the gap to the abstract stage for students. Instead of staring blankly at a word problem, not knowing where to start, children who are taught bar modeling can draw the problem and easily visualize what the problem is asking for. The real Singapore math isn't just a textbook. It is a way that math is taught. Singapore math is about learning how to solve problems, learning why something works, not just how it works, and using the power of visualization to understand the abstract. I'm not going to lie, it's going to look very unfamiliar to most of us when we first encounter it, but I promise you that it is worth it. When we learn how to effectively apply Singapore's approach to teach math, our kids will actually get it and maybe even start to enjoy the subject that many of us hated in school. If you want to learn more about Singapore math, you can purchase my book through the link in the description. Comment your questions on Singapore math below so that I can help you answer them. On next week's episode, dropping at the same time on Wednesday, I will be explaining how Singapore math spirals. Don't miss out and stay tuned by hitting that subscribe button.